Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and today we're going to explore the classic traveler adventure, The Chemex Plague. Written by J. Andrew Keith and William Keith Jr., the scenario was published in 1981's Double Adventure 5. Coming in at 20 pages, the scenario is short, and it's intended for 2 to 8 characters, and serves as a good starting adventure for new players. Uh, the travelers do require a ship in order to do the adventure, but if they don't have one, they can start the adventure off with a paid-off free trader named the Mud Shark. Holy crap, a paid off free trader with a triple turret and an air raft? This is amazing, but do we have to keep the name Mud Shark? Non-negotiable. The adventure is a rescue mission and features a whole lot of combat. It's set in the Alanzar system right at the border of the Spinward Marches and Foreven sectors. Now, since this was published, Mark Miller has declared that the Foreven sector is a preserve, allowing game masters to fill it in however they want. So this is one of the only canonical systems there, and I believe that's the reason the adventure hasn't been updated to Mongo's second edition, because the Foreven sector is now off limits to do anything in. Now for my game, I moved this to being in an unpopulated planet out in the ref sector that the Deep Night Exploration Corporation was surveying. So what we're going to do is talk about that, how I updated it to Mongoose Second Edition Traveler, as well as some various tips and suggestions as a game master who has successfully run this adventure. And I'm Jack the NPC. I'm here to give it to you from a player side of things as I get to go on another bug hunt. But before we go any further, I must warn you that there will be spoilers. So any players in the audience, please stop here. But send your referee this way to see about running the Chamex Plague for you. But if you keep going and you spoil yourself, don't go whining into Reddit about how I'm a bad guy because you ignored the warnings and your Game Master later decided to run it, but you were already spoiled. Okay, Game Masters, let's do this. As I said, the adventure takes place in the Alanzar Sector, which is an asteroid belt being mined by the Instar Spec Corporation. There is a single planet in the system, an uninhabited Earth-like planet named Chamex, which I'm always going to flub because I like to call it Charmax for some reason, even though there's no R, but I started calling it Charmax before I realized it was called Chamex, and now I just say it wrong all the time. Now, no one's really paid attention to this world. It's mostly frozen and has no land-based life. However, there have been some ruins that have been discovered in the equatorial zone, so Instar Spec has sent a team of scientists there to see if they could find anything of interest and anything of value. So the adventure opens up as the travelers have completed a delivery to the Alanzar station, but are now leaving with an empty hold as there was nothing for them to pick up there. Uh, then they receive an urgent message that a pinnace is flying from Charmex at high speed, but it's unpowered and not replying to any communications, and unless it changes course, it's going to fall into the sun. The starport asks the player characters to investigate this and render any aid that's needed. Ah, oh, great. So not only are we not making any money on this trip, but now, according to Interstellar Stella Law, I gotta chase down some stupid jerk before they go flying off into the sun. Maybe I can score some good salvage out of this. It takes two days for the mud shark to catch up with the pinnace, and it's already getting dangerously close to the sun by this point. The player characters can see that its retractable wings for atmospheric flying are still extended, and there's several holes that have been burned into the hull, exposing portions of the ship to vacuum. Uh, the damage of the ship makes docking to it impossible, so the travelers are going to have to spacewalk over to it. For this, I took the deck plan of a pinnace, then I modified it to show the holes and the portions that were currently under vacuum. Now for my game, I had it where Chamex was two parsecs away, so I changed it from being a pinnace to a serpent-class scout ship that was capable of jump to, and then I poked it full of burn holes and sections that were under vacuum. Inside, they'll discover the log tapes, as well as a single passenger hiding behind a wall panel. Now, the survivor screams something about Chamex before passing out. There really isn't much time to check anything else out on the ship before the travelers need to escape before it goes plunging into the sun. Ah, crap. Well, there goes our salvage, guys. The adventure says that this whole portion is optional, saying that game masters might begin the adventure after the rescue, and I can see doing that if you're looking for this being just a short four to five hour single session adventure, but I prefer the idea that the player characters are the ones that perform this rescue instead of just hearing about it later on. After bringing the survivor back to the station, an in-star spec manager calls the characters and explains that this pinnace was part of a scientific expedition team that had been sent off to Chamex, which included a subsidized merchant ship called the Sharon Challenger that 
that had 15 crew, so now we've got one of them back, but there's still 14 there. The Adventure gives us this deck plan to give out as a handout, but for my game, because I changed the company to being the Deep Knight Corporation, I changed its slightly modified version following the company's painting scheme. No one on the planet has been returning hails, and because the Travelers have the best ship that's currently in system right now for the task, this manager offers them 50,000 credits each to go investigate the planet and search for the survivors, including a bonus for any information about what might happen to them and another bonus for each survivor that they rescue. 50,000 each? Oh, no problem at all, boss. We would love to go check out that planet for you. It's probably just a down transmit or something. Does this sound familiar to anybody else? Just me? The adventure doesn't state what the bonuses are going to be for that, so maybe 5,000 each for a detailed report of what might happen to the expedition team, plus one or 2,000 each for each rescued survivor that they managed to bring back. Also, they're going to be sending three NPCs to accompany the travelers, serving as specialists and to safeguard the company's interests. Ah, great. So now they're going to be sending a company stooge to go along with us, and I am positive I have seen this in a movie somewhere. Now, the history of this planet, what happened to its inhabitants long ago, that's all covered in the accompanying adventure Horde, which is in the same book, so I recommend that Game Masters check that adventure out since they're going ahead and picking a book anyway. But for the purpose of this adventure, the scientists ventured down into one of the underground ruins and awoke this dormant species that wiped out the planet's old inhabitants somewhere between four and 800 years before. Now, these things, which are called chamics, are meter-sized long spider things that secrete acid. The module dedicates several pages to these things, but the short of it is, is that there's two types. The hunters, which are like tarantulas the size of Great Danes, and the huge maternals, which are these 10 meter sized bloated queens that can't even move anymore. They aren't really intelligent, but they do possess a psionic ability that's similar to life detection, so they can detect if living things are near them, and they can also sense radio waves, so if anybody picks up their radio and they try to call somebody, they're going to know exactly where they are. Which if they detect any of those things, that's going to send them into a frenzy to go off and kill it and feed it to their queen who's going to make more more and more chamics. So when these things run out of food or they get too cold, they go into a hibernation phase, and this phase can last for centuries. And if the queen who's hibernating detects any life around her, she activates a few of her hunters that go into this sort of a zombie-like questing mode where they blindly wander around the area seeking food, kind of bumping into walls, kind of like scuttling Roombas or something. Then once they find life, you know, either as food or as a threat, the whole nest wakes up and attacks and swarms. The rules for these things are kind of weird. First, in addition to the armor that's equal to cloth armor, Game Masters don't track damage done to the hunters unless a single attack inflicts 12 or more points of damage, at which point it's said that the attack pierced the monster's acid bladder and the creature is dissolved by its own acid, leaving only the empty bladder sack behind. Now I say that once the player characters have witnessed this a couple times, you could have one of them, or maybe an NPC could do this, make a xenology check in order to identify just what the hell is going on and why these creatures are melting. And if they make that roll, they can identify where this acid bladder is, and they can tell everybody that they should shoot for that, and that can you know, maybe be a minus two DM or something in order to hit it. But if they do, all they gotta do is penetrate the armor and get one point of damage through, and it is adios muchachos that thing is going to melt away. This is a really good way that the player characters could use some of the skills that are not combat related in order to help them out in this combat. Second, Chamek's attacking an armored character don't initially hurt the character, but instead dissolve their armor. Converting this over to Mongoose Traveler, I decided that for every five points of acid damage, permanently reduced a suit of armor's protection value by one point. Not a perfect conversion from the original, but close enough. So while Mongoose hasn't updated this adventure to the current edition, they did include a single Chamex hunter in the Pirates of Drenax campaign, and its stats are very different, you know, electing to go for conventional hit points, and the acid doesn't reduce armor, so I find this pretty mundane by comparison of how these things originally were. However, there's also Referee Briefing 6, which I stuck a link to below, and it provides a much longer, several page detailed description of these things, and it's far more accurate to the original version, uh, though it's now updated for Mongoose's 2nd edition, though they still don't dissolve armor with their acid. My only complaint with them is that the illustrations make them look kind of cute versus the enormous spider, scorpion, lamprey, eel looking horrors as they're originally depicted. However, Game Master's wanting a pretty color image of these things to show to 
other players can find some fan-made versions with a little bit of Google Foo and some image searches. And that one on the right there is my absolute favorite. That thing looks perfect to me. Arriving planet side, the player character should quickly spot the Sherrod Challenger resting near one of the ruined entrances. Uh, the dorsal mounted launch craft is clearly missing and the ship is now peppered with burn holes. Now for my game, because we did it online, I made this icon for the ship and I stuck a link below in the video description for anyone wanting to use my handouts and assets. Now before the game starts, Game Master should first establish the ship's condition. So what you do is you take the deck plan and then you punch it full of holes where all the acid is burned through. So for my game, I did it like this, with several missing bulkheads and black holes that were representing those are holes in the floor of that deck, and green holes representing there were holes in the ceiling of the deck above them. So you can see that they kind of go between them, that way the, the green on one is now the black on the other. Now, once again, I've stuck a link in the video description if any game masters out there want to use my map, but they can feel free to do it however they want. And while there aren't any bodies that they find at this site, I suggest that you do have a few weapons lying around, a little bit of gear might be scattered around here. Uh, maybe a couple cool weapons or something that the player characters might pick up. They'd be like, oh, hell yeah, and they pick it up and try to use it. Oh, the current amount of ammo that's in it, that's completely up to you. Next, Game Masters need to determine where the Maternal is located. It needs to be a room with at least 10 squares, except for the bridge that's off limits for this. So for my game, I placed her in the upper deck's galley because, you know, that's where you eat and that's where she was eating. Next is determining the number of chamics aboard, which is 4D times 5. 46 times 5? That comes to an average of uh, 70 Chamax. Holy crap. Guys, we're going to need some grenades for this job. It is a lot, and Game Masters are going to need to place them around the ship, with several of them serving as the Queen's uh, dedicated royal guard. Now, at first, most of these things are going to be hibernating, appearing as these furry, half-meter-sized kind of fuzzy balls. But 2d6 of them are going to be going into the zombie-like questing phase as the player characters enter the ship, and the, the Queen detects their life force, then kind of arouses a couple of them to go into that questing phase. Now, then after that, there's a countdown until the rest of the Chamics awake. However, the very first Chamex that they encounter should be a hibernating one, giving the player characters a brief chance to maybe, you know, check these things out, learn a little bit about them before the whole swarm wakes up and attacks. Hello? Anyone? Guys, I don't know what happened around here. There's a bunch of holes that have been burned in the walls and the floors, but there's no bodies anywhere. And hey, what's that cute furry little ball over there? I'm going to go pet it. Because I did this as a virtual tabletop game when I ran it, I made some icons for the maternal, the hunters, and the hibernating hunters. Again, referees wanting to use them can find them in the link in the video description below. Now, the player characters do not need to kill all of the Chamex here. I don't even know if that would be possible. And killing the queen is going to summon every other nest within several kilometers of the area, so they probably don't want to do that unless they want to just have a tidal wave of Chamex coming after them. Now, in the ship's bridge, they can find their records of what happened just prior prior to when this attack started, as well as a note that a team of five scientists took the ship's launch out to a distant site a few hours before the attack occurred. One of those five scientists is the fiancé of one of the NPC companions that was sent down with the player characters, but for my game, I had it where it was a, a character that was one of the player characters' allies from when they rolled up their characters during character creation, making this a little bit more personal for the player characters. Holy crap, guys. According to this log right here, there were five people that left this site before the attack happened, they might still be alive. And get this, one of them just happens to be my old friend Gladys from back in the day. We gotta get out of this death trap and we gotta find out what happened to them. Remember, we get a reward for every one of them that we save. Hold on, Gladys! We're coming to save you! Now once they know where it is, locating the destroyed ship's launch is pretty easy to do. The survivors have hidden themselves on a mountain above the snow line where the Chamex can't go, so they're safely there but have nothing to eat and it's freezing cold. Now the mud shark comes equipped with an air raft, so flying up the mountain shouldn't be a problem to just go up there and rescue them. Now once they've recovered the survivors and hopefully the data records from the Sharon Challenger, the adventure is done. Now overall, I really do dig this adventure. It's a heavy combat game and players who just go charging in 
in there thinking that they need to kill all of these things, you're probably going to be in for a bad surprise. This is best for players who aren't afraid to you know, pull back and retreat and approach problems from different angles than just you know blindly rushing in straight up the middle. And also characters, they might try landing on the roof of the Sharon Challenger where the Chamex can't easily climb up the metal hull and then drop down through the hatch or any of the holes that might have been burned in there. My favorite idea that the adventure suggests here is the characters wrapping themselves on the acid-resistant bladders that are left behind when a Chamex dies. And it makes me think of that scene in Alien vs. Predator when she makes that acid-proof shield out of an alien's head. Holy crap, how the hell do you bring up an AVP reference in almost every single video that we do? Ain't nobody else want to remember that movie. That's their loss. Now my suggestion here is the player character should be able to use cold in order to defeat the Chamex. In the second adventure of this book, Horde, it talks about how the player characters can use CO2 fire extinguishers to stun the Chamex into a hibernation state for several minutes. So you could have it when they're battling aboard this spaceship, you know, a missed shot maybe hits a fire extinguisher that's on the wall and punctures it. The CO2 goes blasting everywhere and it freezes a couple of the Chamex right where they are. And the player characters, they'll see that, they'll go, oh my god, we gotta use cold against these things. So now they're running all over the ship, trying to find all the fire extinguishers they can. You know, you got the engine room, the airlocks, the laboratories, the bridge, a lot of places on a spaceship for a fire extinguisher. And they can use those things against the Chamex to buy themselves just a little bit more time not to get eaten. That's not a bad idea at all. You like that, then get this. What if the player characters were to use some of that Chamex acid in order to burn through a bulkhead and puncture the fuel tanks and then flood the ship with thousands of gallons of liquid hydrogen, right? Freeze those things solid. And the player characters, they just gotta go back through the ship with freaking hammers and smash it all the Chamex as they go. It is a beautiful idea. You realize how explosively flammable liquid hydrogen is? I mean, the player characters, they shoot a laser or something that causes a spark and set that thing off and everyone dies in a ball of fire. Yeah, but it take out the bugs with them, so it's not a total loss. It's like Duke of the Sight from Orbit. It's the only way to be sure. I was wondering how long it would take you before you made a direct Aliens reference. Yeah, that can't be helped. This entire adventure is one big Aliens reference. Yeah, it's not that similar. Oh, really? Well, let me count the ways for you then. The adventure opens with a derelict starship, only to realize that there's a traumatized survivor aboard who they then take back to a space station where the company suits want to check on a remote, crappy planet that they've lost contact with. So they send a bunch of murder happy happy chumps that are armed to the teeth, aka player characters. But they also send one of their corpo stooges along with them to watch and protect the company's financial investment. There they encounter abandoned location with signs of fighting and holes have been burned through the metal floor, before they meet with an endless number of crawly spidery things that spray acid when you kill them, who have all been dormant inside an alien structure for god knows how long before some idiot woke them all up, and they are all led by an monstrous sized queen alien bug. Okay, yeah, there are a few similarities to Aliens. Yeah, and considering the fact that this adventure was published in 1981 and Aliens was released in 1986, I think we can all guess what game James Cameron was playing when the idea for that movie script just came to him one day. While it's not available in Drive-Thru RPG as a PDF for some unknown reason, you can purchase this adventure from the Far Future Enterprises website on the Golden Age of Traveler CD, which has all the classic Traveler adventures on it, and this thing got delivered to me in the most awesome invite Envelope of all time, so link below for that. If you are looking for an action-packed bug hunt style adventure, I suggest giving Chamex Plague a look. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews, RPG philosophy, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, travelers, you have a great day. You know, I bet you 50 bucks that not only a James Cameron played this adventure when he decided to file the serial numbers off of it and call it Aliens, but his group also tried that gag that I was talking about where you flood the ship with liquid hydrogen and freeze all the bad guys, because he then used that idea when he did Terminator 2. I love the man's films and everything, but he rips off story ideas worse than any game master.